Namaskar my dear students the topic for discussion today in the quick review section is mandibular movements you know this topic is very important to understand the concept of occlusion and also have a thorough knowledge about articulators from exam point of view it comes as a short note in the theory exam and many mcqs are framed from this topic so let's begin Mandibular movements are a complex series of interrelated three-dimensional rotational as well as transitional activity of what of the condyles in the mandibular fossa it is determined by the combined and the simultaneous activities of both the temporomandibular joints as we can see in the picture also Now let us understand the basic about the temporomandibular joint the area where the cranio and the mandibular articulation occurs is called as the temporomandibular joint it is also called as bilateral diarthroidal joint atypical synovial joint ginglimo arthroidal joint and the compound joint the temporomandibular joint is made up of the condyle process the squamous portion of the temporal bone the fibrous interarticular disc the blue colored the ligaments and the muscles then this articular disc it divides the temporomandibular joint into two distinct cavities the upper the superior synovial cavity and the inferior synovial cavity the articular disc is thinnest in the central zone which is called as the intermediate zone the anterior and the posterior part is the thickest This is the retrodiscal part the posterior part and this is the superior head and the inferior head of the lateral pterygoid muscles which are attached to it now in this picture you can see the function of the temporomandibular joint how the condyle process it rotates and then it translates along the mandibular fossa now now let us understand the types of mandibular movements the mandibular movements can be classified on many bases first is based on the dimension which is involved in the movement when the movement occurs first the rotation occurs followed by the translation rotation can be around the transverse or the hinge axis rotation around the anterior posterior or the sagittal axis or it can be around the vertical axis which is followed by the translation in time if we see this picture first the rotation is occurring and then it is followed by the translation the first is the rotation around the transverse or the hinge axis the transverse axis it run horizontally from the right side of the mandible to the left side the rotation around this axis is seen during the opening and the closing of the mouth during the initial mouth opening the transverse axis passes from the head of the condyle and during the late stages of the mouth opening it passes through the mandibular foramen now what is trans terminal hinge axis when the condyles are in their most superior position in the articular fossa and the mouth is purely rotated open that means it occurs when there is 10 to 13 degree of rotation of the condyle in the temporomandibular joint which provides a jaw separation of 20 to 25 mm in the incisal region the axis around which this movement occurs is called as terminal hinge axis this is often asked as a mcq now the second is the rotation around the anterior posterior or the sagittal axis The anterior posterior or the sagittal axis is an imaginary axis which run along the mid sagittal plane. During this movement the condyle on one side it moves downward and medially while the other condyle it remains in the terminal hinge position. Now next is the rotation around the vertical axis. The vertical axis run through the condyle and the posterior border of the ramus of the mandible. When one condyle moves anteriorly out of the terminal hinge position, the other remains in the terminal hinge position. The mandible rotates around the axis during the lateral movements. 
Now comes the translation. What is translation? Translation is a moment when every point of the moving object has simultaneously the same velocity and the same direction. And time is the fourth dimension in mandibular movement. It mainly occurs when the mandible moves forward during the protrusion, when the mandible is moving forward. Then what happens? The teeth, the condyle and the rami all move in the same direction and to the same degree. That is called as the translation. Now where these movements are occurring? The rotation movement occurs in the inferior cavity of the joint that is the below the articular disc and the translation occurs in the superior cavity of the joint that is above the articular disc and it mainly occurs in the later half of the protrusion. So these points are asked in the MCQs also. Based on the type of the movement, the mandibular movement can be hinge movement, protrusive movement, retrusive movement and the lateral movement. The hinge movement is a purely rotational movement of the joint which takes place along the horizontal axis. It occurs till the 10 to 13 degree of the rotation of the condyle that we have already discussed. In this, the separation of 20 to 25 millimeter in the incisal region can be noticed. Second is the protrusive movement. It occurs after the condyle has exceed the 13 degree rotation and now the hinge axis has shifted to the mandibular foramen. This is another MCQ which is asked. The mandible it moves forward and downward in the protrusive movement. Third is the retrusive movement. It occurs when the mandible is forcefully moved behind the centric relation. It is achieved by the fibers of temporalis, digastric and deep fibers of masseter. Another MCQ which is asked. Fourth is the lateral movement. Lateral movement can be lateral rotation and the Bennett shift. Lateral rotation we have already discussed which moves in the mid sagittal plane and the lateral shift that is the Bennett movement. It is the bodily movement or the lateral shift of the mandible. Like see this picture, the mandible is moving towards the left side of the patient. So this will be the working side and this will be the balancing side. If you see this pectoral image, this is the working condyle and this is the balancing condyle. During the lateral movement, the mandibular shift as whole is by 1 to 4 millimeter towards the working side. This shift is called the Bennett movement. It can be splitted into three like immediate side shift, preoccurrent side shift and the progressive side shift depending on the timing. Then comes the Bennett angle. How this Bennett angle is formed? It is mainly noticed in the balancing condyle. The balancing condyle, it moves in three directions, downward, medial and forward. So the angle which is formed by the sagittal plane and the path of the advancing condyle, the non-working condyle or the balancing condyle during the lateral mandibular movement is the Bennett angle. It is no, uh, noted in the horizontal plane. Next is based on the extent of the movement. They can be border movement and the intra-border movements. The border movements are the extreme movements of the mandible which can occur in the horizontal plane, sagittal plane and the coronal plane. When all the three movements are combined, it forms the envelope of motion. The movements which are occurring within this border movements, they are called as the intra-border movements. You often get a short note on these movements, especially the envelope of motion. Now in the horizontal plane, the extreme movements in the horizontal plane, when the mandibular movements are viewed in the horizontal plane, a diamond tracing is found. We can see in this picture. This is the centric relation that is the most retruded point. Then this is the MRL that means maximum right lateral. MP maximum protrusion and this is the maximal left lateral. Now this is the left lateral border. This is the continued left lateral border with protrusion and this border is called right uh, lateral border and this is the continued right lateral border with protrusion and can you see the small circle? This is the 
functional movements which are occurring it occur near the intercuspal position here is the icp just anterior to the centric relation point this is the during the chewing the range of the jaw movements begin some distance from the intercuspal position as the food is broken down into small particles the jaw action moves closer to the intercuspal position we can see in this picture also the left lateral the right lateral and the maximal protrusion now the border movements in the sagittal plane in the sagittal plane it gives a characteristic beak tracing how it is this is the posterior opening border this is the interior opening border and this is the superior border these are the components of the movements in the sagittal plane if we talk about the posterior opening this is the centric relation position and this is the mouth opening till the rotation is occurring that is till the terminal hinge axis when the mouth opening is 20 to 20 5 mm then the translation occurs and then it leads to the maximal mouth opening then the interior border which is till the maximal protrusion we can see in this picture also the condyle is rotating the mouth is opening this is the first part till the terminal hinge axis and then the translation is occurring till the maximal mouth opening and then coming to the maximal protrusion these are the interior and the posterior border movements if we talk about the superior border this is the centric relation then the patient is asked to move to the centric occlusion and this is edge to edge position and this is the functional movement the chewing movement which occurs within the border movement the determinants of these borders are very very important the posterior opening border is determined by the ligaments and morphology of the temporomandibular joint this is the mcq which is asked then if we talk about the interior border movement this is also determined by the ligaments and morphology of the temporomandibular joint they are not determined by the teeth if we talk about the superior border this border it is determined by the occlusal and the incisal surfaces of the teeth the incisal guidance and the functional part this functional movements they are determined by the conditional responses of the neuromuscular system so these borders with the determining factors are very very important now if we see this picture we can see clearly how the border movements are obtained how the mandible moves the posterior border the interior border and then the superior border also movements in the coronal plane it makes a shield type of pattern shield type of tracing in the coronal plane we can see in this picture also this is the centric occlusion position the this is the left lateral superior border and then it is the left lateral opening border till the maximal mouth opening then this is the right lateral superior border till the maximum right lateral position and this is the right lateral opening border movement till the maximal mouth opening so these are the components of the movements in the coronal plane and we can see the functional movements within this border movements it begins and end at the intercuspal position when the patient is chewing the mandible it drops down and then the bolus is chewed properly in the final stages of the chewing the chewing cycle it moves towards near to the intercuspal position that is the centric occlusion position also we can see in this video also the movements in the coronal plane the left lateral then the maximal mouth opening and then the right lateral i hope it's clear now envelope of motion when we combine all the border movements of the three planes we get a three dimensional space within which the mandibular movement is possible this three dimensional limiting space is called as envelope of motion it was first described by possilt in 1952 so sometimes it is asked by the
Possel's name also in the MCQ or in the short note. The envelope of motion is longest and widest superiorly as we can see in this picture and it narrows down near the maximal mouth opening. Here it is narrow. As the jaw separation increases, we can see the space for the movement decreases to zero at the maximum mouth opening. So please prepare this for the short note also. The intra-border movements can be functional movements or the para-functional movements. The functional movements include the chewing, swallowing, yawning or speech. And the para-functional movements include clenching, bruxism or the other habitual uh, movements. They will occur within the envelope of motion. Now the significance of mandibular movements. Why these mandibular movements are very, very important? The first is designing selection and adjustment of articulator. For fabricating any prosthesis, we need an articulator. So depending on the clinical situation, we select the articulator. And for this, we should know about the mandibular movements. Second, developing the tooth form for the restorations. Like we need to give the anatomic semi-anatomic or the non-anatomic teeth, especially for the complete dentures. We need to understand the mandibular movements, the concept of condylar and incisal guidance. Then is understanding the basic principles of occlusion. First, we should know the mandibular movement. Then only we can decide the occlusal scheme we are giving for the complete dentures. We are giving for the full mouth rehabilitation. Diagnosis of the temporomandibular joint disorders. The significance of mandibular movement is very, very crucial. Then changing the vertical dimension. When the vertical dimension is collapsed in some patients, we need to rehabilitate it, restore it. So first we should understand the mandibular movements. Accordingly, we will do the treatment planning. For the gothic tracing in complete denture, we need to understand the movements. Then only we can guide the patient accordingly. Though this topic of mandibular movements is very vast, I tried my best to cover every point in this short presentation. So wish you success, my dear students. Please like and share the video. Do subscribe for more learning.